Hello everyone, welcome. We are going to wait for some other participants to connect and we are going to start at uh, 10.35.
Hello everyone, welcome. I hope that you can see my presentation, but I think yes, if not, you, you just tell me. So welcome everyone to uh, the webinar, Zero Pollution Challenge and Nature Based Solutions, the role of the metropolitan areas and the financial instruments. Uh, today we are here in the framework of the European Green Week uh, 2021. This year, the European Green Week is uh, um, dedicated to the thematic of uh, zero pollution from different points of views, uh, the soil, the air and the water. And uh, we are here within two European projects, uh, the LIFE Metrodap project financed by the LIFE program of the European Union and the Camelot project financed by the Europe for Citizens program of the uh, European Union to uh, face uh, this important thematic uh, under two main perspectives, the perspective of the climate change mitigation and adaptation measures and uh, the perspective of the uh, territorial environmental governance. So the role of uh, uh, metropolitan areas and local and regional governments to uh, improve and enhance and uh, implement an efficient environmental territorial governance. My name is uh, Marta Rosio. I work for the European Association for Local Democracy, ALDA. ALDA is partner of uh, uh, the both projects that are coordinated by the Metropolitan City of Milan, uh, with whom we have organized this, um, this webinar. So I would like to uh, briefly introduce to you the agenda of, uh, of today. Um, so first of all, we are going to very briefly um, give you an overview of the two projects that we are uh, organizing this webinar within that are, uh, as I said before, the uh, Metrodap project and the Camelot project. Uh, then uh, Carmine Pacente, head of, U uh, head of European Policies Department of the Metropolitan City of Milan, uh, is going to talk to us about the strategic role of uh, metropolitan areas as leaders of 
of the territorial environmental governance. Then we have here with us uh, Dr. Nicola Collanino from the Metropolitan City of Milan, who is going to talk to us about the um, different mitigation and adaptation measures, and in particular about the uh, challenges and benefits of nature-based solutions. And then we will have uh, a final uh, part of the webinar dedicated to a participatory session um, in which all the participants will have the possibility to share uh, opinions, ideas, also experiences about uh, maybe some uh, good practices in their territories. And we are going to discuss about uh, uh, we, we are going to discuss about nature-based solutions and uh, territorial environmental governance. So um, I would like to, uh, in this moment, leave the floor to uh, Tatiana Negurita, who is going to uh, talk to us about the uh, Camelot project, and then we are going to go on with the agenda. So Tatiana, uh, when you want, the, the floor is yours. I'm going to leave you the screen. Uh, Tatiana, we don't, think, yeah. we don't hear okay. you. Uh, you have your microphone is switched off, I think. Sorry. Sorry, I apologize for it. No, don't worry. <laughs> so let's start. Sorry. I would like to kind of, uh, to shortly present the Camero project uh, of which the metro in which the Metropolitan City of Milan is the coordinator of this project, and uh, I would like to present you just the four main points which are related to the list of partners, the description of the project, the main objectives, and finally the activities. So let's start by the list of partners. As I anticipated, the Metropolitan City of Milan is the coordinator, the lead partner of this project. And, and we have a lot of uh, metropolitan and urban uh, European area, which are the uh, metropolitan area of Porto, the region, uh, the Stuttgart region, the metropolitan area of Barcelona, the Alda, the it's an association with l'Agence de la Democratie Locale. We have also the uh, city of Zagreb, the metropolitan uh, area of Gdansk, the metropolitan city of uh, Bari, and finally we have the Consiglio Locale of Municipio Craiova, which is a town in uh, Romania. Regarding the description of the, uh, the project, it was uh, presented in 2019 and uh, uh, within the program of Europe for Citizen Program 2014-2020, and it uh, fin uh, finances um, a project aimed at promoting the exchange of best practices on strategic European issues in order to strengthen the international cooperation. The Camelot project lasts two years, but with the extension that we have asked to the European uh, Commission, it will end in the end of February 2023, and it aims to build the European metropolitan identity from the construction of a network of Europe urban and metropolitan areas uh, with the purpose to exchange experience on the management of the European Fund. So in the end of the 2000, in the end of the year of 2019, we have had the, the approval of this project and the European Commission has financed our uh, project. Regarding the main important and strategic objectives of, uh, of this pro of Camelot project uh, are the following, to build a thematic network of the European cities, to bring citizens close to the European institution, to increase a proper use of the European funds in urban and metropolitan areas, to fight the Euroscepticism, to share the uh, knowledge to citizens comparing different experiences of governance across the Europe, to create an uh, awareness about the European identity and institution, and to increase the pro-civic uh, pro participation in political decisions. 
finally, uh, how we uh, prevent, how we uh, plan to realize all these activities and to reach all these objectives. The project foreseen the organization of nine international events, one of each uh, in partner city. The conferences will represent a moment for citizens to acquire the fundamental knowledge of their uh, European institution and decision-making process with the purpose to consolidate a real active and mature European citizen. The project will also create a debate uh, on the institutional and political future of Europe focusing in particular on the role of the metropolitan cities in European governance. So we have already done an event in the last year, but the next one will be in Milan in October 2021. And finally, uh, close uh, related to the international events, each partner will also organize local activities in which the local actors uh, uh, which are, for example, the young people, representatives of civil society, policy makers, and public, uh, public officials will be able to discuss about the topics of the project with the aim to increase the civic participation in the political decision concerning urban and metropolitan area. So I thank you very much. And if you need additional information, we'll be happy to answer you or to uh, provide more information. Otherwise, you can follow also the uh, you can follow the page the Camelot project on the um, on the Facebook. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tatiana, for this interesting presentation. So now I'm going to uh, briefly uh, present you the uh, the other project we are uh, dealing with today within this webinar, which is the uh, Metradap project. So uh, the, um, the Metrolab project is a project that started in 2018. It is financed by uh, the LIFE program of uh, the European Union, which is the, uh, the territory is uh, the Milan metropolitan area. But of course, uh, as it's a European project, uh, we also have a look at the, the European level and the international level, and we are going to see how. So the project partners of the project are uh, the Metropolitan City of Milan, who is the coordinator, Ambiente Italia and Lega Ambiente Lombardia, uh, who is taking care of the um, engagement, citizen engagement at the territorial level. CAP, who is going to, sorry, I because I see popping up different things since I'm the host, so I'm distracted, <laughs> sorry. Then there is the European Association for Local Democracy and uh, EGEOS. So the uh, issues which are tackled by the Metrodap project are mainly three. Uh, the first one is uh, the intensification of prolonged heat waves in urban areas. Then uh, the uh, issue of extreme weather conditions, especially in urban areas, and especially as regards the flooding and extreme flooding. And uh, uh, of course, we also have a part dedicated to the environmental governance. So uh, the problem of the lack of coordination between municipal and metropolitan Metropolitan climate change adaptation uh, uh, strategies and measures uh, implemented at the territorial level. So the main objective of the project is to, uh, starting from the case of the Milan Metropolitan City, to create a shared governance amongst uh, the local authorities in the Milan Metropolitan area and to uh, implement and adopt uh, efficient climate change adaptation strategies in a coordinated way, starting from the metropolitan level and adapting uh, these uh, measures uh, at the territorial level involving the 133 municipalities of, uh, of the area. Uh, the project is doing this through uh, some uh, specific actions that start, of course, from uh, uh, the data analysis. So uh, thanks to uh, the partner EGEOS, um, the project developed uh, meteorological satellite data and uh, um, developed also uh, vulnerability maps in order to have a clear idea of uh, the uh, situation in the metropolitan area of Milan as regards the heat waves and flooding in particular. 
Then, starting from this data analysis, uh, the uh, Metropolitan City of Milan um, developed uh, EU adapt uh, developed adaptation strategies and measures, and included uh, these uh, measures in the uh, territorial plan of the Metropolitan City of Milan, uh, which is one of the first plans uh, which included in uh, the text a, an entire chapter dedicated to environmental emergency and climate emergency. Then a part of the project is uh, uh, dedicated to the nature-based solutions and the possibility to implement nature-based solutions in urban areas as a, a strategy um, to uh, improve uh, climate change adaptation in cities. So uh, the project is uh, um, implementing, has implemented the two pilot uh, nature-based solutions in two cities in the metropolitan area of Milan, and it has also realized uh, some um, factibility studies to see if it's possible and which are the benefits and challenges and, uh, and overall uh, from a, a governance point of view to implement this kind of measures at the territorial level. Then, of course, uh, uh, an entire part of the project is dedicated to uh, stakeholders' involvement, uh, both at the national and international level, uh, in order to engage citizens to create awareness about climate change and to discuss about uh, the possible solutions and uh, strategies that we can implement uh, starting at the local level. And, uh, um, of course, uh, there's the part dedicated to the international networking uh, with other projects other civil society organizations, uh, uh, local and regional authorities at the European level, because uh, um, one of the main aspects of the project is, of course, the implementation or the, the analysis of the factibility of the implementation of the nature-based solutions. And uh, uh, the exchange of experience in this sense is very important because there are, uh, as you may know, a lot of countries in which nature-based solutions are really at an advanced level. So uh, the exchange of practices, experiences is, uh, is key. So just to focus on uh, the first action that I was telling you before, so the climate analysis and vulnerability assessment at the metropolitan level. So what uh, the project has done is to uh, use uh, and uh, um, process uh, meteorological satellite data uh, for the development of high precision soil ceiling maps in order to have really a clear picture of uh, uh, the level of vulnerability of uh, uh, the metropolitan area of Milan. And uh, with the data that have been collected, the project has realized the platform that is available online where um, the municipalities of the metropolitan area can uh, see the level of vulnerability in terms of uh, urban heat island uh, um, effect and also the um, level of vulnerability of the population. So uh, I will send you the link in the chat after the presentation. Then uh, um, these, as I was saying before, these data have been integrated in the metropolitan territorial plan. Uh, we have realized the study of nature-based solutions, also realizing a catalog, um, choosing 20 nature-based solutions uh, and uh, uh, analyzing uh, uh, the, the benefits, the challenges, the impact, the features, um, how they can be implemented uh, at the um, uh, local level and which can be the challenges also for uh, local administrations. And this is an example of uh, raising awareness activities that the project has developed, uh, the Metro Theater project, because as I was saying before, the, the project is very rich and there is also an important part of raising awareness besides environmental governance. So uh, this is an example of what the project has done um, both at the local and international level, because we have also done it uh, uh, online in, uh, in English and it's a very interesting um, theater show about uh, climate change. So uh, this is a very general overview of the project, but uh, I wanted to keep it short in order to leave space to the, the speakers. So uh, now I leave the floor to uh, Carmine Pacente, who is going to uh, focus on the uh, role of metropolitan areas as leaders of territorial environmental governance. So Carmine, the floor is yours. And thank you very much. Uh, and of course, if you have questions or if you want to uh, just uh, intervene or say 
something, you can just open the microphone or write in the chat and we're going to give you the floor. Yes, thank you very much. Can you see my presentation? Now? Could you see my presentation? Yes, yes, yes Marmine, yes. very well, yes. No, thank you very much uh, and thank you for this meeting. Yes, my name is Carmine Pacente. I'm the head of the European Coordination Planning and European Project uh, Department in the Metropolitan City of Milan. And I give you some elements about the topic. Uh, our um, coordination is working on the European Planning and Funds 2021 and 2027, and also on the recovery plan, as you know with some important actors, decisional actors. First of all, the National and Regional Association of Italian Municipalities, because we are working together. Secondly, with our region, the Lombardy region. Third, the central authorities, of course, the central government, the, uh, the ministers, and the European institutions, the Committee of the Regions, because I'm a member of the Committee of the Regions in the Cotter Commission, especially. So the European Structural and Investment Funds 2021 and 2027, and the European Parliament, in particular with the, the rapporteur of the multiannual financial framework 2021 and 2027, and the European Commission. We are working a lot with the General Directorate for Regional and Urban Policy, of course, because our activities are focused on these um, kind of funds. On the urban sustainable development, because the focus is this, we proposed working together with ANCI, the Association of Italian Municipalities, some proposals to our regions. First of all, a technical proposal, but I, I think that you know, we propose that minimum the 10% of the RDF, European Regional Development Fund, was focused on the urban areas, plus the European Social Fund plus. Secondly, we proposed that funds were focused on the few big projects, sectors, housing, school, health, and social. Housing means, uh, for example, energy efficiency of public buildings also in the school, and some municipalities of the metropolitan city of Milan were co-financed by the European Structural and Investment Funds, such as, for example, the municipality of Milan, Cinisello, Ro, and Legnano, big cities of our metropolitan cities. Each project is between 10 million euro until 330 million euro of European funds and national and regional sources, of course, because the European fund is a co-finance, as you know. Uh, about the um, cohesion policy and the recovery plan, uh, we worked with the uh, 20, 25, more or less, European metropolitan areas. And we created, we wrote a position paper for a strong role of metropolises in the European cohesion policy and in the recovery plan. And we sent this uh, position paper to the commissioner, uh, uh, Els Elisa Ferreira, European Commissioner for Cohesion Policy. We had a meeting with her, a small representation of these 25 metropolitan areas, had a meeting with the European Commissioner because we are stressed since uh, five, six years, because we need that metropolitan areas uh, have a strong role on the cohesion policy and on PNRR, the National Recovery Resilience Plan, as you know. In our organization, we are creating a European metropolitan department working with municipalities, because as you know, in the metropolitan areas, there is an imbalance of power between the main uh, municipalities, such as, for example, Milan in our metropolitan area, but the same is in Catalonia with Barcelona or in uh, Germany with Stuttgart or Munich, 
and um, or uh, for example Lyon or Paris in France. So we are creating an European metropolitan department working with municipalities, around 20 municipalities say, um, uh, right now, uh, because the, uh, we are working on the European direct funds. So not only the European investment and, and the structural funds that are the, the, the main topic, of course, because the budget is uh, incredible big, but also with European direct funds. For example, for the environmental uh, topic, LIFE or Horizon Europe for the next programming period and the next multi-annual financial framework. And in the recovery plan, Italian recovery plan, there are the mission number two and the mission number three that are focused. I give you some examples because it's really important for us. Energy efficiency of public buildings, such as, for example, schools, but not only schools, our public buildings, for example, our headquarters, maybe. Secondly, urban and metropolitan cycle lane. Third, new green buses. We have to substitute our buses with new green buses. Fourth, urban and metropolitan woods or electric refills in our municipalities and in our metropolitan areas. And it's really important, in my opinion, the 30% of the budget of the mission two and mission three, mission two especially, is focused for the main cities and the main metropolitan areas. So we are working together, metropolitan area, municipality, the main municipalities, and the uh, local and uh, European actors, because uh, uh, we think that uh, there is a big risk. Uh, it's a really important and uh, uh, a big risk because uh, the differences, uh, the economical, social, and territorial differences could increase uh, with the recovery plan if we uh, don't balance uh, uh, the financial sources uh, and uh, the financial capacity uh, of the investments, of the public investments and reforms, of course. So this is a, a general framework uh, with uh, some interesting, I think, um, topic for us. And uh, thank you very much again for your invitation for this meeting. Thank you very much, Carmen, for the very interesting overview and presentation. Um, also for uh, giving us a, a look at the European level. Uh, so if uh, someone has questions for, for Cam Carmen, please uh, tell me or you can write them in the chat so I can uh, read them for, for you. And if not, I uh, would leave the uh, floor to uh, Nicola Colaninno, who is going to tackle the other main uh, thematic of uh, uh, today's workshop, uh, which is uh, nature-based solution and the uh, challenges and benefits. So, uh, Nicola, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Marta. Uh, good morning, everybody. So, um, I, uh, I will share my screen first. Okay, here comes my presentation. Okay, uh, the presentation is a little bit long. We have, I put uh, 50 slides, but yeah. the idea is because the event is being recorded. So the idea is to leave even document that you, you can go through, uh, through the document even in second step and you can get more information about it. Um, some of the information uh, that I put in this presentation have been um, addressed also by Marta before in very uh, perfect way. So I will just repeat a few, few things, but I would like um, to make kind of uh, interactive presentation. So I will show you some, um, some of the, um, the output, some of the tools that were created within the Metro ADAPT project. 
Um, so let's go to the presentation. Uh, the, the main topics of the presentation are, I will give a little uh, overview of uh, the objectives as Marta already talked before. Um, just we will recover some concept. The covered area, as we know, is the metropolitan area of Milan. I will give some numbers, but in very fast way, very quick way. Um, we will speak about uh, the climate hazards that uh, were addressed by the project, in particular the project uh, focused on urban island effect and heavy rainfall flooding. And we identified, we mapped some hotspot areas by using new technologies, new uh, GIS technologies, in particular we use satellite data, weather data, and uh, soil sealing based on land use, land cover maps for identifying which are the most uh, critical hotspots in the metropolitan area of Milan, both in terms of urban island and heavy rainfall flooding. Then the presentation will focus more all, um, on the, the MBS handbook, which is another uh, output of the project. And in, in my opinion, at least, but I think it's quite um, shared the idea, this tool is fundamental for, um, for municipalities in order to improve, in order to introduce climate action into urban planning. And um, this was made at two levels. So there is uh, the level of the metropolitan area of Milan, which were uh, promoted by metropolitan city of Milan. And then each municipality can, uh, can make use of this information, can make use of these tools for improving their own urban planning, let's say at the local level. Uh, we will conclude with uh, two pilot projects, uh, which were um, in, in implemented municipalities, which are Solaro and Masate. Um, it's quite technical, this part. Uh, so I, will, uh, I prefer to close, I will close the presentation with two short videos, which in my opinion, they are uh, very uh, explanatory um, by, by themselves at least. So, uh, let's go through the presentations for some an overview, a quick overview on the objectives. So the project, the Metro Adapt project, focused on implementing new approaches for using technologies, technologies, ICT technologies using uh, satellite data. So we are in the field of remote sensing and GIS science, basically. So by use satellite images, which uh, give us, which give us um, land surface temperature and using weather station, we were able to identify uh, those hotspots in terms of, we call them thermal anomalies, which basically is the difference among urban temperatures and the rural temperatures, which normally in literature is known as urban island phenomenon. We create data sets also for supporting the risk assessment and improving local adaptation. Another important objective was the mainstreaming of EU strategies in adaptation planning um, at territorial level, as I said, and at municipal level. Um, also promoting climate governance, as Marta said before, one of the objective was also uh, to tackle with the lack in uh, terms of governance um, addressing these two main uh, phenomena, which is uh, rain, uh, heavy rain, uh, rain, rain heavy, uh, heavy rainfall uh, flooding and urban island, and also enhancing the knowledge about uh, specific actions, which are the NDS. We will see also uh, with some tips, some more details, what NDS are. So this is the area addressed by the project. As uh, we have seen before, there are 134 municipalities. The area is around 1,600 square kilometers. Here, there are some numbers. Sorry, I didn't translate to well, but you have the presentation. But I think the most important information in this slide is that more than 40% of the area is covered by built up area and infrastructure. So more than almost half of the area is covered by urbanized area. 
This is very important in terms of uh, improve, increasing the effect of urbanite island and flooding in the, in the territory, because we know that um, the more the area is urbanized, the more is exposed to this kind of effect. Here we have um, just an other numbers. In basically, we can say that from this slide, we can take the information about population. We have 3 million of inhabitants, more than 3 million of inhabitants. But very important information is that more than 20% of the population is over 64 uh, years. Well, it was this information is uh, from 2016. Of course, now the situation maybe uh, needs to be updated after the pandemic situation we live in these years. But still, um, the older uh, older people are a lot compared with other kind of population. And why this point is important? It's important because older people, for instance, they are more exposed. To climate, uh, to climate effects, for instance, let's think and heavy temperatures, heavy rainfall, they are um, age, uh, income, these are uh, variables which can uh, teach us how to handle with more uh, vulnerable population. So which are uh, the problems we are addressing, as we say, we are addressing head and flu, basically, why? Because they affect a lot our daily life, in particular in terms of living, in terms of working, in terms of moving. Actually, as some example, think about comfort, think about health, think about the productivity itself. So we also have matters of economics, actually, that we can tackle with MBS, with, uh, with uh, climate change uh, actions. Well, at least well, a climate change to fight uh, action to fight climate change effect, uh, public transport, and so on. As as we said before, me and Marta also uh, we are uh, the project also aimed at um, filling in lack of coordination and improving governance. One of the most important tools that were used was the, uh, the, met the Territorial Metropolitan Plan of Milan, which for the first time in Italy uh, introduced in the planning, in the territorial planning, uh, measures for fighting climate change. Mm, for instance, uh, uh, starting from the analysis, as we said, analysis is based on very high technological information from satellite to weather station and so on but also introducing uh, green infrastructures, introducing uh, MBS, as we will see up there. <clears throat> so by, uh, by facing the climate change, basically we are uh, tackling uh, adaptation and mitigation. Mm, the project itself, uh, Metro Adapt project, focused more on adaptation, but of course adaptation and mitigation are uh, strongly related to each other. Think, for instance, if we plant one tree, if we, if we plant trees, we are uh, improving urban climate, we are uh, reducing temperatures, for instance, we are, improving air we are improving air quality by reducing air pollution, we are also reducing demand for energy, so we also have economic issues. In both of case, we are tackling both of the topics, but let's say in this case, we are more focused on adaptation where adaptation can be implemented. Well, actually adaptation can be implemented in building and urban design, urban furniture also, as we see in some of the NDS that we put in the catalog, infrastructure, territory and nature also, think about reforestation, for instance. Another important point is the citizen involvement, the citizen engagement for different standpoints. Let's think about culture, education, we have a social life, we have different assets that can be handled by um, measures that can improve the adaptive capacity of population of territories in general. Here we have the, the two topics that we addressed, land surface temperature and hydraulic hazard. I think I have some more time because we are quite good in timing, so I will show you. One of the tools that were uh, developed by this project, if you go to the, um, to the main page, 
you can get to this. Uh, it's basically a web GIS uh, platform. It's a web GIS uh, structure that provides us information about the thermal anomalies, as we are speaking, which is derived from uh, land surface temperature from satellite. We have the runoff, and we also have events, critical events in terms of uh, rainfall flooding. So as an example, I will go quite fast. If you go to thermal anomalies, you can also select where uh, thermal anomalies are higher, as you can see here in the, in the web GIS. So you can navigate through the web metropolitan city of Milan and you can define where the intensity, well, the anomaly, as I said, is the intensity basically, which is the difference among, in this case, is taken, is taken into account a baseline. So with respect to this baseline, which are uh, the degrees in terms of difference, it's kind of delta among the actual, the current temperatures and the baseline. So if we see in the city center or in other area, we have up to three degrees of thermal anomalies, which is quite high, which is quite important if you think that the objectives are to reduce 1.5 to 2 degrees. So we can identify which are actually the hotspots. This uh, same way you can do for runoff, but also you can have a look at uh, sensitive population, for instance, well, it takes some time, but depends on the connection, but the tool works perfectly. So you have a number of sensitive population and you also have the risk analysis. So I don't want to waste a lot of time, but it was important in my opinion also to give some practical information uh, you, as you can uh, use these not just as municipality, but also as uh, common people, as common citizens. Let's say. So let's go back to the presentation. I put the link, uh, actually, uh, I put uh, the link at this web page at the end of the presentation. I reverse a little bit the order. So at the end of the presentation, I will close the presentation with the link to this uh, web GIS. So let's go fast because you have seen this, uh, this slide already. It's kind of summary of what we say till now. So which was uh, the main objective. It means uh, improving, supporting urban adaptation design to all municipalities based on open data, open information, open platforms, as you have seen now, which were the main points. So innovative meteorological data, combining satellite and weather data, high precision soil seeding maps, soil permeability and risk analysis, including population. So uh, we speak about social demographics and hazard. The hazard, as we know, we have two hazards, temperatures and water. Then we come to the NDS handbook. This is a very useful, in my opinion, uh, tools that all municipalities can use for implementing uh, different measures in their, uh, in their territories, in their municipalities. Just briefly, because I guess uh, all of us, we know what NDS are, but just briefly, they are um, actions inspired by nature, but they conjugate nature with engineering. So it's a very smart way for uh, recovering nature in cities, basically. Uh, because this is important for well-being, this is important for biodiversity, is very crucial for urban comfort and quality, even for health. Which are the main uh, impacts? Well, main impacts, we divided first the impacts uh, according to four main overall um, topics, which is climate, as we say, the ecosystem, biodiversity, and socioeconomic systems. So the objective is to introduce a nature into or to recover nature into the urban environment, in which with more details, we are detailing now the four overall impacts in more impacts. So we know that NDS can impact on water management, for instance, on air quality, as we say, on urban regeneration even, participation, so there's a lot also, as we said, of social or, social or economical aspects. The end book is based on 20 NDSs, basically is structured in five points. There is a brief description, as Marta showed before. There is technical information, pros and cons, management and maintenance. Also, we provide some best practices. You can exceed the document by the main page of the project in resources and documents and publication. You can download it as PDF. 
uh, the PDF is also, you can download the whole PDF, but because uh, the handbook is divided in three main sections, you can also download each section by separate. The three sections are water management, green on built environment, ground green spaces. Just briefly, for water management, we, uh, we refer to a multidisciplinary approach for uh, improving meteorological response. But of course, as we say, when we speak about nature-based solution, it's important to emphasize that we are speaking about co-benefits because, of course, in this case, we are improving hydrological response, but we also are working on uh, biodiversity. We are working on water quality, water, reducing water pollution, water in, ra in rainfall, uh, in rainwater mostly, but we are also working on air pollution. And we can implement this kind of uh, measures in different parts of the city, roads, squares, infrastructure, for example. Just a few examples that you can find in the, uh, in the handbook. So we go fast, the filtering trenches, vegetated, uh, vegetated canals, and so on. Then we have green on built environment. You can find all these sections in the, in the handbook. Green on build environment, we are speaking about the green roofs, green walls, pergola, and for each measure, you have all the details as we showed, as we talked before. Ground uh, green spaces, we have shared gardens, urban kitchen gardens, in particular, these two are fundamental for improving also social life, for improving uh, sharing uh, experiences, for improving culture. And this is very important at different kind of ages, from children to uh, older people. You can provide different kind of cultural aspect, initiative, and so on. They are fundamental also for tackling these co-benefits uh, that we spoken before. There are different cases of implementation. You can implement MBSs depending on the type of MBS, depending on the needs that you want to tackle. You can implement MBS on buildings, you can implement NDS on neighborhoods up to uh, huge territories, very urban area, rural area. You can get effectiveness at different uh, timing, short term, mid term, and long term. This is the, how the, 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 the end book is structured, as you have seen before. Most important part is the environmental impact and socioeconomic benefits, which are divided into infiltration, fortification, lamina uh, lamination, and water harvesting and pollution in terms of environmental impact. In terms of socioeconomic benefits, you have health and well being, you have urban aesthetic also, but you have also economies, you have energy saving, which are very important because you also have the, dim the economic dimension in this case. Well, I will go very fast. I put some examples more deeper. For instance, vegetative canals. We have this information here, but you have more information in the, um, in the end book. I will show you briefly the end book also, which is this one. So for each measure, in practice, you have the, uh, the image, the technical image, definition, the benefits, as we have seen before. Here we have the selection of benefits, of course, that are tackled by this kind of specific measure. Well, you have technical, technical details for implementation, design details for implementation. You have also maintenance aspects, you have good practices and so on. So in the guideline, in the, in the handbook, you can find all this information. So let's go quite fast through these examples because you have more information in the PDF that you can download freely. Green roofs, green walls. And here, as we said, are very important also for improving social life, cultural events, and so on. How can um, MBS be implemented in cities, in territories, can be implemented by using urban strategy in France, as we did for the territorial plan of the Metropolitan City of Milan. Cognitive tools, think about uh, green cadasters, for instance, urban planning regulations that go deeper in detail, and public uh, private agreements, which are very important because sometimes there is also a matter of financing this kind of interventions in city. Because it is not just financing the uh, design of intervention, but it's also financing the maintenance of intervention. Um, during the time. This is a very important uh, costly part of 
implementing nature in cities. Then here we have the two pilot project. Uh, we go very fast because these are very technical. Just for having an overview of Solaro, there were two interventions on two uh, big parking lots. And basically they provide uh, sustainable uh, uh, urban uh, drainage systems. In particular, in Solaro, they put two bad retention areas to the dispersion systems. I will go fast because I think it's more, uh, as I say, that the beginning is more explanatory to show you the, the videos, at least one of them, it's just two minutes. So I will conclude with uh, one of the videos. But here we have very technical details. I think it's not the case of going deeper. This is Masate. It's quite a huge intervention which was uh, made in Masate. It's a very practical example of implementing MBS in cities. In this case, they are tackling water management, but actually, as we said before, <clears throat> we are also improving biodiversity. We are also improving climate. We are also improving um, air quality, water quality by drainage and so on. And then I finished. If you go on resources in the main page and gallery, you have more information about even uh, these projects. And I would like to close. You have also these videos. The second one of Solaro is quite short, it's two minutes. So if you want, I will show you this video. And then, I, or as I told you at the end, you have the link to the, uh, to the web GIS. And I would like to close with the video because my opinion is very. It's funny, it's interesting, it's very explanatory. So just two minutes and that's it. Nicola, we cannot hear the, uh, the sound. I think it is because you have to share the sound of the video. Oh. Ah, okay. Um... Um... But you know, I didn't do it. Let me, let me do it in a more practical way. Let's see if it works. Yes. Why, just the music is not, nothing special. Well, that's it. Uh, I took more, more than 15 minutes, actually, but I think I'm perfect in time, right? Yes, 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 you're on time. Yeah, yeah I yeah. don't know. If, if you want, we can also see the other videos or the other video. There is another one, or as you prefer, you can see it by, by yourself. It's, uh, it's short, right? It's, uh... it, I, I, I think it's three minutes. Well, yeah, we can watch it. I think it's, uh, okay. it's interesting. Okay, see, it's yeah. funny also, yeah. Because it's very explanatory because it shows how yeah. it works, the MBS in terms of drainage of water. So I think it's, it's quite interesting.
what uh, that's it basically i think it was important to show these videos no because they are concretely they have been realized concretely so it's putting in practice all theoretical background and yeah, this was important so that's it from my side thanks thank you uh, for your attention and yeah Thank you very much, Nicola. I see that uh, we have uh, uh, Jorge uh, Ventosillo is asking the web link to the report in this last presentation. Yes, now we, we are going to, we can send the link to all the uploadable material that we have on the on the website. Yeah, yeah, I will give you the presentation and then you can yeah. upload the presentation to everybody. Yeah, thanks. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have some other questions from... Uh, from someone. Okay, so uh, I I leave the word to Carmine, who wants to say goodbye. I think before ending the the webinar. Yes, thank you very much uh, again. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm here for some minutes, or uh, we can see very soon. I think, and I hope. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully in person, no, in present. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Carmen and Nicola. For... During the next meeting of Camelot, maybe, because Tatiana told me that we are organizing the meeting in Milan of the Camelot project in October, and we hope that we could meet personally. Yes, <laughs> in yeah, yeah. a great possibility. No, not, not, be, not be so sure, actually. <laughs> I'm scared <laughs> about the situation, it's very... It's a very bad situation. Well, we then, yeah, let's hope we can meet in presence finally. Yeah. So see you soon and thank you very much. Have a nice day yeah. and weekend. Ciao, bye bye. Thank, thank, thanks to thank you. you. Bye. Thanks. Okay, so now, uh, well, thank you everyone for your attention. Now we are going to uh, spend the last minutes of uh, the webinar um, in a participatory way. So I leave the floor to my colleague, Nadia Di Giulio from ALDA, who is going to introduce you what we are going to do now. Thank you, Marta. Good morning to everyone. And thank you for participating also from my side. And thank you as well to Nicole and Carmine, uh, webinar speakers, for their interesting and detailed uh, contribution regarding the topic of today's webinar. Now we start a participative uh, session that is organized in two groups uh, of discussion concerning the main topic that we, uh, we went through today, the natural-based solution and environmental governance in the framework of the zero pollution challenge. But before starting with the discussion group, with the working groups, I would like to have a really quick uh, ice breaking, asking to all of you to quickly present yourself with your name and surname and your organization and telling us uh, which is your interest, the natural based solution on the environmental uh, governance. I will start with myself. I'm Nadia Giulio from ALDA and I'm particularly interested in uh, um, environmental governance in the metropolitan area. So now I will give the floor to who wants to start. Just to warm up ourselves before uh, getting together in uh, in the working group. Maybe Nadia, you can call someone and then. I can. I can do it. No problem. I can. Yeah. I can be the next. Thank you, Nicola. Yeah, no problem at all. So my, my name is Nicola Colanino. Actually, here in this webinar, I'm participating as a standard consultant for Metropolitan City of Milan, um, mainly. Um, uh, working in um, Metroada project, in life Metroada project. Actually, I'm a um, researcher at Politecnico di Milano instead. Um, I'm an architect and urban planner in particular. And my main focus is the, um, working on analysis with new technologies, in particular using ICT, using GIS and remote sensing for analyzing the environment in particular focusing on head and water. Uh, also, of course, because my background, I'm planner also, an urban planner. Uh, my interest is how to improve this kind of technologies 
for uh, supporting urban planning at different level of, from the territorial level to the local level at mm, up to the micro level actually because as we have seen MBS most of the time are very important even for entering with microclimate and air pollution is not exactly my focus but uh, with my group at Poitecno di Milano, we are working on a new uh, urban innovation action uh, project in Ferrara, which is working on air pollution. So we are starting also working on air pollution. But of course, uh, even air pollution can be a uh, fight with, uh, can be tackled with um, nature, it can be tackled with nature-based solution. So of course, I'm not um, very specialized in uh, mm. the technological aspects of MBS, but of course my interest is more focused in this case in MBS. Um, yeah, Thank you, Nicola. Please name someone else that you would like to hear from, from the participants. Me? Uh, yes. Okay, in, uh, Carlos. Please, Carlos, the floor is yours. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself with your name, surname, organization, and your topic of interest? Martina, I will call everybody. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Martina. I'm currently working for Metropolitan City of Milan uh, for a whole year. I studied during my bachelor degree in international relations and I'm currently pursuing a degree in public policy. So my interest is more focused on uh, European funds and application on uh, regional areas, metropolitan areas, but I found the presentation of Nicola really interesting. It's a topic that I know, but not so deeply. So I think nature-based solution could be my topic of interest today. Thank you, Martina. Uh, I asked you, yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Uh, Sonia. Good morning, I'm Sonia Jlaoui and I'm a stagist in uh, Metropolitan City of Milan and I'm also a student in um, university. I study political sciences, so my interest is more into the environmental governance than the MBS. Thank you, Thank you. Sonia, could you please call someone else you would like to hear from. We cannot hear you, you have your microphone up. Uh, I don't know, I can see everybody, so. Um... Okay, I will choose from uh, in behalf of you if you agree. Yes, and I will invite Jorge to briefly introduce himself. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Jorge Betosilla. Uh, my topic of interest from the two given is uh, governance. Although I, yeah, I, I, I prefer governance to nature-based solutions simply because I find it uh, broader. Uh, I'm currently working for the Knowledge Center for Biodiversity of the European Commission. And my work focuses around science policy interface. Thank you. Uh, maybe, well, I'll, I'll let you, Nadia, select the next one. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. And uh, what about Marino? Would you like to introduce yourself and telling us which is your topic of, of interest uh, between uh, Nature MBS and environmental governance in metropolitan area? Marino, can you hear us? Yes, thank you. But uh, no, thanks. It's good in that manner, please. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I will uh, thank you all for introducing yourself. And now let's move to the working group. Um, I will briefly show you some uh, technical information about how the working group work. Uh, it will last just 20 minutes, so we will fast. Let me share my screen. 
So basically, as I was saying, these working groups are organized in uh, two discussion groups around the main topic uh, we discuss today. And in these working groups, we would like to hear from you your uh, experience in these two topics, your thoughts, your concerns, your uh, proposals. Um, may I ask someone to uh, get up with the microphone? Yeah, we can we can mute them maybe. Yeah, yes. I, did, I did. I did. I knew. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. And uh, um, the working group we will use WonderMe, a platform for the working groups that look like um, looks like I can you uh, as you can see in the screen. And uh, so we will move on this platform. We will share uh, the link to get on WonderMe platform in the chat in a, in a few minutes, just at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, before moving to the other platform on WonderMe, uh, you don't have to sign out from, uh, from Zoom, but uh, you have to just turn off your camera and your, um, and your microphone. Well, here are the simple instruction. Uh, once you click on the link, you will uh, ask to all of the access of your microphone and camera. Then you have to type your name and take a picture if you want. You are not uh, obliged to, to take the picture. And then you just join the discussion. Once you join the uh, platform, you will have this kind of avatar, avatar with your picture of your um, your name, your first letter of, of your name. Then you can freely decide to move in one of the uh, discussion groups. Um, actually, I will invite you to join both in order to your, uh, give your contribute in both topic, uh, but they, they are open. So uh, there are not uh, a timeline schedule, but you're free to decide uh, which group to join. And uh, once you decide, you just move close to uh, a participant and then a, a circle discussion will, uh, will start. So I kindly, uh, I will type the, um, link in the chat. And first I ask you to turn off the camera turn off the microphone and click on the link I just shared in the chat to access on WonderMe. Don't sign out from Zoom. I will be here in case of technical problem. Sonia, could you please turn off your camera? Thank you.
Hello, Jorge. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you for joining this, uh, this group. Well, um, first of all, I would like to um, ask you why you decided to join this group, which is your interest in environmental goals. Nadia, sorry, you have to switch off the microphone in Zoom. Okay.
here we are uh, again. So it was really interesting knowing you and exchange with you uh, some thoughts concerning our today's meeting topics. Thank you for uh, for participating and stay with us this uh, this morning. Also a big thank you to uh, to the speakers, Nicola and uh, Carmine and Tatiana. You will uh, say our thanks and and also goodbyes to Carmine in behalf of, of us. Um, Marta, if you like, if you want to share uh, to share some things from my side, it's it's okay. And thank you all again. Thanks to you. Yes, just uh, just I would like to thank you very much for uh, sticking until now with us. I think that uh, very interesting points were raised up by everyone, and I, I thank you a lot, Nicola, for this very complete overview of uh, the MBS and the project. And I I learned a lot. Thank you, Tatiana, and uh, everyone. Really, uh, so yeah, that's it also from my side. And have a great afternoon. Thanks to you all and. Hope to see you soon in another location. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.